Welcome to mandatory fields you can specify yourself using the simple object designer. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, a customization that is quite common is to ensure that certain fields have values or have specific values before users can click something. Uh, let's say that you, you have a and, and I think this is what we're going to do in, the, in a minute, that you're not allowed to release a sales order unless the shipment date is a week ahead. Uh, because we don't want somebody releasing a sales order and then we need to ship it this afternoon or something like that. Um, so with the new support for creating mandatory fields with the uh, in the Simple Object Designer, we can create this and it's actually quite simple. So let me show you. Now here is the symbol IP designer. And um, I have those two ways that I can go and find that action. So what we do is that all what we have up here on, on top of any page is the action bar with actions, or you can call it the menu bar with menu items, but action is the, is the Microsoft lingo here. Um, and uh, what we can do is that we can we can either use this one, and, and you see this starts on page one and tells you all the actions that are, are in the system, or we can go and navigate to the page that we we want to look at. Let's say we wanted to look at sales orders, uh, then we'll find it here and go and say customize, and click on mandatory fields to look at the actions. Um, Then you can search for your action and be aware that the same action can be like both on the list and on the cart. Uh, so you might need to create it in both places. So here's the release action. I click conditions and now I can specify the conditions that need to be fulfilled in order for user to be able to click on this action. Uh, the first thing I need to ignore at this point is this, this is field location. You can actually, the, the symbol object designer knows that on a sales order, there's both a header and lines. So we can uh, we, we can check for fields on both the header and the lines. Uh, we're not going to do this in this video. There's another video with more advanced uh, uh, mandatory fields that will look at how to also go and, and look at fields in, in, on the line. So we'll just stay in the main table. Um, and shipment that's close enough for shipment date. So shipment date is the field that I want to make a condition on. Now we see that this turns red. Red means that this is not complete. This is wrong. Uh, well, let's say not complete. So a condition has three components. The first one is the field. The next one is the operator. The uh, is does the field need to be equal to something or different from something or larger than something or smaller than something. Uh, in this case, we want the the shipment dates to be larger than something because what we're saying is we need to have at least a lead time of a week. Uh, so we will use greater than. So shipment date has to be greater than. And then the last component, the third component in condition is the compare value the right side of this. Um, and here we can just type stuff. Uh, and, and if you are into the more advanced part of the simple object signer thing, you might type stuff. And then it might tell you that, no, nope, I don't buy that. That does not make any sense. But if you don't want to type anything, you hit the three dots and we open the cheat sheet. So the cheat sheet looks and say, huh, this is a date field. Here are some cheats for a date field. Um, and so either you just can use what we have here or you can be inspired uh, and use this to uh, create your own. And we can see here that, that there are some, and this is one of the one we're gonna use in a second that will calculate a date. Uh, we can also specify a raw date. Um, there's also a blank date. So if we want us to do that, a date field has to have, we need, we just need a shipment date and we'll do 
different from 0D. So the field has to be different from 0D in order for the user to click on the action. Um, but maybe we just want the shipment dates to be larger than the posting date, then we could actually specify that too. But I will go with the, there's one here, this is one week from today. Uh, and we see calc date one week today. I think we can, we can get that to work. Uh, we can still edit this one and say, hmm, no, no, I, I'm, I'm, I like seven days instead, so I, I'm changing this. When I exit the field, if there's no messages or anything, what you have put in is good. Otherwise, it will tell you if, if the whatever you have put in here is not correct. So now we're missing two things. The, the second to last is that we need to give the user an error saying, uh, shipment date, uh, must be one week in the f future, or we cannot ship same week or something like that. And the very last thing is that we can put, and now I'm just going to type shipment date, so we can put the red asterisks on this field too. And I exit this, and we can see that. Huh, it turned black. So now this is good, this is fine, uh, and, and we're done. I will close this one, I will close this one, and I will close this one, and I will close this one, and now I hit publish. Um, and what is happening now is that the simple object designer will go look at what we have defined, and then we'll start writing the code. Uh, just like I would write the code if you would come to me and say, hey, Eric, I need you to create an extension, a customization that when people are hitting the release function on a sales order, they should not be allowed to do that if shipment date is less than one week uh, from now. Um, so the simple object designer writes the same code, and when it's done with that, then uh, multiple things happen. The first thing is that it compiles and builds an app uh, together with all the other things that you can use the simple object design for. Then two things happen after it has compiled and built the app. One is that we get the app file downloaded here. Uh, and uh, because if I'm working in a sandbox as I am, and when I have tested my app and since this is working the way it's intended, I can take this app file that was just downloaded go to my production environment, upload it to extension management, and deploy it uh, on production. Um, the other thing that is happening is because I clicked yes, and uh, to deploy it on the sandbox. And while I was chat chatting away, it deployed to my sandbox. So let's open a sales order. I go to sales orders and I need to find one that is not released. How about the first one? And remember, I did this on the cart. I did not do this on the list. So now I can hit release. Now, hang on, let's see. Where do, where do we have shipment date on this one? Um, shipping, shipment date. It's empty. We can see the red asterisk is here because that is required. Let's hit release. Shipment date must be one week in the future. That's a weird message, but okay. So let's put it as, uh, I'll do it almost, well, a, a bit in the future. So today's the 8th. Oh, hang on. Let me actually uh, it put it way into the future. There we go. This before work date, so now this is two day ahead. I get the same error again. Uh, so let's put it at um, on the 16th. Does that mean that I'm not able to count? Let's do it on. Oh, <laughs> this is way in the past. Let's do it 23. Wow. And now I am able to 
release this thing. Released. Um, so that is how you can create a mandatory field on an action. You can specify multiple criteria, you can run different fields and so on. If you want to check the more advanced uh, ways of doing things, there's another video for that. Um, maybe that's even shown here. If not, you can find the link below. Um, and if you're interested in the symbol object designer, there's also a link for that uh, in the description. And you can try it out and you can try all the stuff that I've shown you here uh, in a sandbox uh, before you buy a license. Thank you for watching.